Alright, so a new labyrinth just dropped, and you definitely want to farm this one because in the shop you have 50 LR coins. It's so dark because you know I already bought 50. 50 LR coins, and you you need those, alright? Not only we're getting a new LR as soon as this labyrinth leaves. For JP, it should be in two weeks. But also, if you want to true awaken your characters, each individ individual character needs 10 LR coins. You need a ton of these now. Like a ton. You can carry up to 200 now, which is cool, I guess. But you're still going to need 100 for any new LRs, so you definitely want to farm this labyrinth. At least you get those 50, and if you want to get the Hell costume, not the Hell is really good right now, but in any case, how to farm this efficiently? Honestly, I don't know. I do know, but it's like really weird, because I think this will very much depend on what you end up on your first run. So... Right here, you can see, this is the post-everything. So, this is me after beating uh, the three individual uh, levels, and then the after, where you're supposed to get the really good points. But the thing is, the thing is, the after isn't all that great. It's still, I think, the best way to farm, but not that it's too, too amazing. For example, I'm just gonna skip real quick this fight. Each individual one of these fights, post the three bosses, will give you 52 or 58. Apart from like two fights, which will give you like 100 and something. And you might have noticed if you open the shop, you need like over like 2,000 or something if you want to get to these 50 Alarcos and buy them. And obviously you also need to... Uh, Buy the alpha if you want the gems. There's a lot of coins that you need, and you get 50 per you know completion of this. And let me tell you, they're not easy. They're not easy. I bit this one pretty easy because obviously I have melee, but after beating so many times, I have nine levels of this attack buff. So, what is my true recommendation? Let me reset reset this real quick. This is pretty much how I would I would say for majority of people I would go about this. You're gonna start, let me start with uh, an extra here. The unit that you can pick in the beginning is either gonna be one of... Oh, oh, it's random. I didn't know this. Okay. Weird. It's kind of random then. I, this is my first time seeing these characters specifically in the beginning here. Um, well, it makes it hard for me to recommend what character to pick in the beginning. Pick whichever one feels better, just one that would do damage. Obviously, you're not going to see the melee here, because it's uh, my last run character. Just pick one that's going to do somewhat okay damage, it doesn't really matter. What is going to matter is the characters you get afterward. And for sure, this time around, I wouldn't just pick passives that give you damage, like I did. Like, all my passives here do damage, but... It seems like some level of tankiness and survivability is good for that, you know, final post three bosses thing. Now for this first floor, doesn't really matter much, the boss is very hard. What I'd recommend is that, you know, pick, you know, the fights that will go for more passive. So this passive, then, you know, you get the star, whatever character in the best here, take it. And then you fight this one, you know, there's a passive there. Then you go right, because this is going to maximize your passives. If you go here, you get three passives. If you go here, and then here, you get four passives. Then you can get a character here, or you can go here if there's, like, no good characters. Then you can get another level increase, shop. And in each individual shop, let me get there. Yeah, before I get to the shop, passives-wise, there's a lot of really bad passives, unfortunately, this time around. This one is, like, really type-specific, so if you have a character in mind, like, I would say everyone should just go for melee. <laughs> Uh, and maybe potentially get, like, rules for demons, or passes for demons. I personally, after running this quite a bit, I have never seen a single passive for demons. But, you know, it is what it is. There's, like, a lot of, uh... There is a lot of, uh, specific... Like, this is for red units, fair is, like, this. A lot of bad passives, just take whatever you can the best. Hmm. Yikes. Right, I was gonna use this shop as an example, but it doesn't have it. Whenever you get into a shop, and there's the option to buy a stats, always buy them. 
you're gonna need them. Like HP, I was always recommending only to buy attack because it was all about how fast you could do it. But genuinely, like the last, you know, post three bosses floor is very hard. Like they hit you extremely hard. So I would say even if you get defense for the defense release really tab buff increases, and if you get HP, it is worth buying. Because, honestly, I would say it's worth doing, like, three or four, even four runs where you're just resetting until you have enough stats and a good enough team to actually tackle that last one. It's not like last time where if you had, like, one character that could carry, like, have Melee here, you'd think, you know, he could, he could carry. No, like, you really need to be very, very, very overpowered on that last floor. As you can see, the first boss gave you 158, so even if you are just resetting, it's kind of boring to just keep replaying, and because it, it plays pretty much the same, even though it's technically supposed to be different each run, it's not really. It is pretty much the same thing, but you are getting a good amount of currency still. You are getting more if you're doing the post three bosses floor, but you're still getting a good amount of currency, so it's not a waste of time. As I say, I never find the demon passive. This is a demon basic stats by 15%. Epic. Again, I would recommend demons, but you might end up finding a run like Mael. As long as you have a super hard hitting character that can help you, that's how you should base your future runs around. So, for example, I just started my run with Melee because, you know, I had him on my last run. Now, my goal is to make up a demon team, right? That is my goal now. And if it's for you, you should do kind of the same on your second run. If you get like Mayo, I don't know if I don't know exactly what characters you can get because unfortunately they don't have a list. I've seen Liz, I've seen I've seen a lot of festivals in here. I have not seen the one ultimate. Just go based on that on your next run and make a team around that. I got to a store where there is a buff increase. Le level 10, it's like barely an increase, like 50 attack. Only this much crit, uh, crit chance and crit damage. Still worth it because, um, I mean, now I'm pretty much done farming, but it is still worth buying each and every time you get it. And let me get you now floor three to show where the good characters actually lie because even in floor two, like, the characters aren't very good. Oh, yeah, I haven't been t paying much attention to the bosses so far. Floor one and two boss are very easy. Floor two boss. Could catch you off guard because she heals once she drops in there, I think, 30% HP. But generally speaking, they're incredibly easy. Even if you have a pretty <laughs> a pretty bad team, like, um, you know, some basically just floor 1 characters, you should still be fine. They're incredibly easy. I actually got mixed up. Mixed up. This is the floor 2 boss. Um, again, it it's just not very hard. The, I know I have melee, and he's going to one-shot him pretty much, but... The boss has very low health. You're gonna you're gonna demolish him without even knowing what he does. But the reward is 348. Like compare that to you know beating one of the other fights being 52. Obviously you can do the other fights much faster, which is why doing those is easy. But I just want to reinforce that even though I'm telling you to you know keep replaying until you have you know a ton of stacked stats. It's still not gonna be a waste of time or anything. So floor three is when characters start getting good. The first one is never gonna be really good, for what I can tell. I'm gonna refresh even. Yeah, but the rest are pretty good. So for here, right? For what I can tell, there's no big difference between this shop and this shop in terms of character quality. But th this is what I would say, you know? You only have three chances of buying characters here, really. You should save your money for buying characters over resetting passives on these fights. Now, depending on what you did before, this is where you're gonna choose if you go left or right. Right is gonna give you pretty much the the same amount of stars as, as the left if you go here, but you have a chance of actually getting level up here. I'm gonna go right this time. But if you need more stars, guaranteed stars, left might be better. It doesn't really matter. Actually, it doesn't matter. Left has one extra passive. 
I mean, left is objectively better than never mind. He has one extra passive, so. Yeah, left is better. Oh, yeah, going back on the passives, always make sure you take these, or at least get one of these. Attack lowering the enemies for the last floor is very big because they hit you really hard. Alright, gotcha, the shop. What characters are you looking at? Bad. Like, this shop can give you full on festivals. I've seen, like, having all five festivals, like, really good recent characters. Or it can give you this. So, luck of the draw, I guess. I'm gonna buy more stats. Like I said, I've been saving most of the money I got. And you can get passives as well. I would say most of the money should go to good characters, but if you get unlucky, you need to get passives. This is a good one. 5% tackle stats for blue. Then, uh, do that. But I'm gonna use some to respin those characters as well. Not as bad, like it's pretty much it's like three festivals and three seasonals. I will be replacing this uh, Derriere with Kusok, but it's not amazing either. Yeah, it could be better. I've seen Demon King show up on this one before. Uh, for someone, like, the same screenshot of their team, and they had Demon King on this one. It's like... You want to build a team around the first character- the first, like, good character you get. This damage increase per orb you have all taken. Over the defense for now. Not a very good team, but... Is what it is. This is why you're gonna have to reset until you do have a really good team. Starting with a phenomenal unit like Mali or Mael will highly increase your chances of having a really good team eventually, but it can take a while. For this fight, I'll just go first for Kusok, because he doesn't have as much health, I'm pretty sure. We click 265k. And it's not that much less, but... Again, not a very difficult fight, because there's, there's no crazy mechanics. I don't even think that these enemies have damage cap yet. Like, damage cap starts on the next floor. So, again, not a very hard, hard fight, you just need to kill them. If one of your characters die, it's fine. Like, I'm pretty tanky now, because uh, I am lowering his attack quite a lot, and I have some extra defense and HP, but... If one of your characters die, just uh, revive them on the next floor. You can immediately revive someone. So, not a very that hard fight. The difficulty begins after this. And the reward for beating this one is 610. Like I said, like, just re restart. Restart until you have multiple stacks of stats before you actually tackle... I'm not gonna change this. My other one's better. Before you actually tackle this. Let me actually refresh. I'm not gonna show every single fight. If you want to see every single fight, watch my other video because it takes too long. This is, this is very long. Like, so, so many fights. And again, each individual only gives, like, 50. 52, 58. The shops do not have characters. There's no other character you can get. This is the team you're stuck with. This is why you want to come in here with like an actual proper team. Like, this is the best team I've got so far. And I have, I don't even have a full demon team. I have Arthur. I don't have, I want to have Demon King. Whatever. The hard fights, right? All the hard fights are going to have damage cap. So no matter how hard one of your characters hits, you're not going to be able to one turn them anyways. I'm going to get to the final boss because he is supposedly the hardest, but... Not really, as long as you can get to him, that's all that matters. Unless you can easily beat all these fights, don't bother. If you're struggling with like fight 3 or fight 4, restart. Because unless you're being these super fast, it's not even worth farming this. I want to show an example of a really hard fight, and uh, my Kusok died on the last, ma on the last uh, fight because he got one-shotted by a level 1 card, so that's phenomenal. Every single... No, every, sing I, no, every single fight that has three enemies, the middle one has damage cap. Very annoying. Does it say how much? Somewhere it should, but she has damage cap. And that makes the fight extremely, extremely annoying. And for majority of them, all of them have uh, revive. I don't know if this one does. But you can see how the damage she took, because damage cap... And even if, like, so many buffs that I have, I still can't just one-shot the side units of, like, a melee AoE or anything. Plus, I lost one of my characters, right? A demon, especially. 
And she hits you really hard, which is why I said, you know, you still... Usually you... When you pick the passives, you go for the ones that are gonna make you, you know, beat as fast as possible. So only attack, only damage increase. Not this time around. Like, the, the enemies hit you way too hard. I guess it's a good thing they made those passives more usable. I think it's annoying. <laughs> because this is not something like you just be once. You're gonna You're gonna be doing this several times. So it's more annoying than uh well balanced. And now we got to the final boss. And even though it's tier, it's not as nice as carry as the previous fights. He has damage cap. And I believe it's 30%, so you can't one-turn him unless you have a, you know, like, the one ultimate. But you can saw even like a level 2 melee single target didn't do that much. Don't worry about getting his health low. Oh no, it's, uh, it's 20% damage cap, never mind. Again, I've only actually done this fight like three times. This is my third time doing this, because... I reset it so many times, and I lost, like, a few times getting to this point. So... But after you kill him, I'm pretty sure he has one revive, and that's it. You don't need the hardest hitting characters, you just kinda wanna survive. Which is why even though you do wanna have passives that increase your damage for getting the other fights rather quickly, here it's all about surviving. The boss has a damage cap of 20%, which is 54k, that's not that much damage. And then he hits you decently hard, like here on Arf Arthur died. So... Kind of a... Boring Labyrinth, but that I, I guess Labyrinth is just kind of boring. You just kind of do the same thing over and over again until you're done. So that's... Uh, that's it. Just keep repeating those uh, three floors. Until you have the stats for it. Like, the final boss only gives 257. I'm pretty sure if you just keep repeating this final post floor, uh, floor three fights, it is faster. But only if you can do it fast, so... Good luck farming.